This is starting to become a per event situation where I have to put up a video talking through the F5 wars. For some reason, every time I put them up, I made a 2023 one at ALW, Invictus Launch Week, and somebody already said that, oh, that's out of date, it doesn't work anymore. So here it is, right now, last night I was camping the Idris P uh, Wave 2, and I also stopped by for Wave 3 to see how it went down. And I want to talk a little bit about the marketing on that too. But the gist is, during the waves, preferably Wave 1, you come in, you add the ship to the cart, and then you try to purchase it. However, if you can't get it in, the, if you can't make the purchase, but you at least get it into the cart, you've already set yourself up for reasonable chance of success in the later waves because it stays in the cart. My advice to you is to leave the page up, but I've actually had a power failure before where I came back and it was working. So your mileage may vary, but I would still recommend leaving it up in the cart and come back, set an alarm clock even if you have to, five minutes beforehand, sit down, be ready. Have uh, your credit ready, your payment ready, whatever you're using, think that through. Sometimes purchasing like a five USD armor or paint or something is this wise idea, so all that's lined up. I've heard people had that problem in the past as well. But also interestingly, now that I have you, uh, to, to talk about this, uh, <laughs> the Idris is sell, sold out. The credit Idris and the credit Javelin sell out, sold out in about 60 seconds or less on both waves. I'm averaging it. And then within two minutes, within two minutes, the War Bond Idris P sold out on both. Now, I've asked around about this, and the best theory crafting we have is that people think the Idris is going to raise in price once it is flyable. If it's going to be flyable in the next 12 months, or at the very least when Squadron is launched, hype will be through the roof and that this price will go up. I don't know how true that is. I can also say that the Javelin is also in Squadron, but there's no talk of releasing the Javelin into the game as a play playable ship. Reminder, the Idris and the Javelin that we currently have in game do not have full interiors. The closest one to a full interior is the Javelin, which during Invicus launch week, they send it on the ship tour, where you can go around the system, arrive at the locations that the Javelin is at, and walk some of the Javelin. One of the reasons is the servers. Another reason is they don't want people to be able to steal the ship and fully use it. The Idris is one of the ships, for example, you can get your hands on if you do certain glitches and stuff, depending on the patch. And then uh, basically it's you fly it like a gigantic fighter and it can fire off its size 10 gun. That's as far as the, the, right now is in the game. It's not a real ship yet, but it will be. And it will be a very useful ship. Now, another ship that's on the horizon is the Kraken. I think that if you really want to try to look through the tea leaves, I think that the Kraken will be in Squadron 42. But I'm going to add a huge asterisk here to avoid getting getting flame ward on this. I'm not sure if it's in the first one. I think the Kraken makes an excellent pirate base to operate out of the coil in Squadron. And we may just see an exterior of a Kraken in the first one. And then in the later ones, we'll see a full Kraken. It also makes a lot of sense for CIG to leave some suspense, some excitement, things that will shock you. You know, uh, the Idris is a very strong ship suddenly having an enemy ship that's not UEE, UAE Navy, uh, a Kraken roll out of nowhere, sporting a pirate. I firmly believe that the Idris will get a CDF paint and the Kraken will get a pirate paint in the future, probably themed on some of the different organizations within Pyro, and the ship would be perfectly suited for those places. Um, but back to topic. I think that you will see a Kraken. So if you are talking about price increases and trying to look for the tea leaves, I still think you have ILW to make these decisions for both ships. But I think if you're really worried about price increases, don't just think about the Kraken, the, the Idris. Also think about the Kraken. I am not saying at all you should have some uh, fruit of the moment situation or a fear of missing out, whatever way you want to phrase it, whatever fun way you say it. I don't think the prices will go up anytime soon, but in 12 months, eh, maybe. 
My recommendation is if you're truly even considering this, once again, I hope it's not due to my encouragement or suggestion that you're doing it, but if your organization, not you, your organization is considering having a ship like this, talk to each other, communicate, make sure there's not three of you suddenly per trying to purchase these at the same time and you won't have enough crew to manage all these things. And it's just, you'd be better suited having one person with a crucible, one person with an M2 or a C2 Hercules or, or maybe even two of them, dare I say it, for this type of price point, and then one person happens to pick up a Kraken or an Idris. You know, communicate. I highly recommend that to the people who are actually going to crew each other's ships here. And think carefully about your options. And also, bear in mind that if you pick it up with credit, you can melt it. So after 24 hours, you can throw that big ship into the melt pile. Now, if there's a surprise price increase, you're stuck paying the price increase. But if there isn't a surprise price increase and you get wind of upcoming, like Squadron 42 release date gets released and you truly, like you're staring at the screen right now and saying, I 100% believe in my heart that this will release and then that price will go up. Well, now you have it in melt. So you can play that buyback game at any time and you could you could buy it back a week beforehand <laughs> and you'd be good to go instead of having all that credit tied up for years. Unless you look at the loaner list, which is up on your screen and you say, wait a minute, the Idris P uh, loaner list is interesting to me or the Kraken or the Kraken Privateer. The loaner list for these ships greatly interests me. I can live with these. I can live with tying up this much credit or literal cash tied up into this ship. So I highly recommend consider all your options every single time you think about these ships. And that's all I have to say about that. But I, I tried my best on these channel to kind of do a variety show during these bigger events. This is my chance to really get on the soapbox and really talk about, you know, some of the things I, I, I think that are worth talking about. These are expensive considerations, whether it's in credit or in cash. And remember, back to the F5 war, just to recap that, have a world clock up. Time and date is my favorite. Link will be below. It is not the only one out there. I'm not being paid by them or anything. Go use whatever one you want, but have it up on your second screen. Don't slam the refresh key 50 times before the before the time changes over to the, the actual moment it actually will change because then the server will start slowing you down or your browser will start getting weird and all sorts of stuff you're better off waiting until the second that world clock clicks over and then refreshing waiting five seconds if it didn't do anything refreshing one more time by that point it, it the game is already afoot if you're stuck in like a refreshing loop by that point you're not getting it you might get lucky and get it at least in your cart and then fight for it in the next waves. Remember that the other waves exist. Remember if you're, if you're looking, if you're listening to me and you're, you're looking at a pioneer, a Phoenix, don't sweat it. Maybe this year, maybe this specific event, because they just announced base buildings getting completely readapted starting in January. Uh, <laughs> Pioneer might be a little hot, contested, but it's not anywhere near as going to be contested as the Idris during Squadron might up its price year, supposedly, if the rumor mill is correct. Um, and that is not a, a rumor mill even. It's a rumor created by other players. We have absolutely zero, zero CIG indication from any such even suggestion that the price is going to go up on the Idris. And that would be a historic situation. The Idris and the Kraken are kind of like these price points that are the upper tier of the... <laughs> I was about to say the word reasonable. But because the Javelin is just so much higher than both of them, they're like in the upper bracket of what even people can consider purchasing as a ship. And it's more of a, how many ships do I have to melt in my credit to get this said ship type ship? Whereas most people don't have enough to credit a Javelin, but they might have enough to credit an Idris, or they might have enough to credit a Kraken. And remember, if you're taking a swing at the Apple, don't melt CCU'd ships unless the value is not that good. When you look at your exchange, uh, if you go into your My Hangar and you look at the exchange number, and you have a really good price compared to the current price for that ship, you will lose hundreds of USD in value on that ship. It, 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 we're talking about a big jump uh, to melt that to get that value, unfortunately. Uh, also, remember package ships. 
you have to melt the whole package at the same time. And if there's CCUs in there, be very careful. Think of your options. We just saw that video where less than a minute or two, the entire thing. That being said, every year there's some weird ones. I was just talking with somebody last night on Discord who managed to score an Idris credit with, with a cell phone. So things can happen, especially in the later waves. And if you didn't get it and you're listening to me now, don't fret. There's always ILW and Vegas Launch Week. There's always the next IAE. And there could be events throughout the year. If I was reading the tea leaves and I get to spread my own rumors now, I'm going to suggest that they'll probably have a sale for all ships in Squadron 42 during the launch of Squadron 42. So unless, unless they set it up literally to launch at CitizenCon next year or something, could be, who knows, which rumor is it's going to be at Manchester, by the way. Um, I would say that <laughs> I, if I was CIG and I was their marketing team, I would sell every single ship, including the limited ships, such as the Idris's, uh, in that period. Also, I would not suggest that Idris M is not off the table. Thanks to the F8C, thanks to the F7A craziness that we're, we're probably going to be seeing this, this, this game around. We'll still see, we'll still see, but follow the actions, not the words of these situations and start seeing the kind of changing in the winds here. Sacred ships are no longer sacred is what we're starting to see. I, I'll leave it there, but I just wanted to kind of clear the air and make sure everybody's got what they need for this. And I'm going to put this at the end of the video because this is kind of a, been a kind of little long winded, but this is a big decision for all, for everybody, anybody. I can't imagine somebody having enough of a, of a fleet to not even wince at the idea of making a difficult call like this without at least spending what I'm looking at the timeline right here. We're talking for 10 minutes, spend that 10 minutes. And if you don't spend it here, or if you share this with a friend and there, first of all, thank you. <laughs> and uh, if they, if they don't want to listen to the 10 minutes, you have to paraphrase it, empower yourself, spend 30 seconds or a minute putting together that theory of as an org or as a group of friends, we need to talk over what kind of ships. I'm not telling, you know, the way I would phrase it is, I'm not telling you what to do with your money or your credit. I'm just trying to ask you, you know, do we really need six Polarises? Do we really need uh, three Idrises? Maybe we can just communicate at least what we're, what we're looking at and what we think is really shiny. And you might be surprised. You might be very surprised at what your real soul searching can get you especially when you look at the price points for some things. I'm, I'm a broken record, I know, but the Endeavor CCUs are a big thing for me this year, especially because they seem to be that they're going to stay at the 10 USD price point from the Starfarer Gemini to the Endeavor. And then also the Crucible will be a very important CCU, I think. And if you missed any of these ships and you're listening to me and you're kicking yourself mid-game, mid, mid -game, except for the Limiteds, you can buy them all on the final days of the sale. Just remember that. I'm going to put the final sale up here too, just so you have something else to kind of waypoint yourself through. Enjoy IAE. Remember, it's not just about the ship sales. It's also about getting in there, having a good time, meeting some, hanging out with your old friends and meeting some new ones. And I wish you all the best. This may be the one time in the history of the game where you can actually see it with like under the landing gears while it's actually perched on them. Like there's pressure applied to the landing gears and we're able to look from underneath. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know how it happens, but I always break games. <laughs> I always find that glitch. That thing you're not supposed to see. Yeah, this is a rare shot. Being able to run under the pedestal while the pressure's applied. Literally underneath thousands of, I guess, hundreds of tons of pressure sitting above, right above us. It is a very cool look. Yeah, it, it's it's an amazing looking ship, and it's definitely sends a message what it's there for, which is obviously search and rescue, right? 